Hello from SlideNerd and hello from Weaves. What's up folks? In this video, let me actually build the base adapter that we guys have been trying to build all this time, right? So the idea behind the base adapter is something like this. You have a class that extends base adapter. You're going to implement all its methods. And then inside that base adapter class of yours, you're going to maintain some kind of array that is going to contain the data that is the those titles, those descriptions and those images. And then inside the base adapter, there is a method called get view. Your list view calls this method before creating a row and showing it to the user. That means inside this method, you get the chance to pick the data and put it inside the row of the base adapter and to fill the views and show the user the completed row. I'm going to make a class called views adapter. I want to make sure that I extend the base adapter on this. So I'll say extends base adapter. At this point, you will get an error saying blah, blah, blah. Now, this is because the base adapter has certain methods that we need to override. And we let me do that by saying Alt Enter, Implement Methods, click OK. And there you go, there are four methods that we need to override. Now, what is expected out of these methods that you have here is that you maintain some kind of array over here. Now, I could say something like this. I could say three arrays, one containing the titles, one containing the descriptions and the other containing the images. But, well, there is a kind of issue in this method. Now, if you see this get count method, what is expected is that you return the number of elements inside the array of yours from this method over here in the return statement. The problem is, if I had one array, I would return its size over here in the get count method. Now we have three arrays. So whose size should we return? So this array method which you have by creating simple arrays here is kind of what the amateurs or you can say the rookies in programming do. And if you guys have seen base adapter examples all over online searching on Google, you probably figured out that no one actually writes arrays plainly like this, right? People use an array list or a list or some collection of some sort. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. The idea is going to be something like this. I'm going to maintain an array of certain objects. Let's say u1, u2, u3 and u4. Now each object u1 itself is a composite object that contains the title, the description and the image for a particular row. So you guys get the point. I'm making a composite object that contains these three things together and I'm going to use that. So for that, I'll first have to define what that composite object is. I'm going to make another class, call it single row. Inside this, I'll make three things, string title string description and int image. Now here in our Weaves adapter, we don't need these three arrays anymore. We can maintain an array of single row objects instead, right? And that's exactly the plan. So if you were here, we maintain an array of single row objects. I'm going to use an array list and then I'm going to say array list of single row list. Now this makes things a lot better, better in terms of compactness, readability and reusability, of course. So going ahead, let me initialize this inside our constructor. So we use adapter here. Then I'm going to say list equals to new array list. So now everything has been initialized. But remember one thing, this array list is right now empty. There is no value inside this. So I need to put values inside this. All right. So how do I put the values? Very simple. First, I need to get the titles, descriptions and images from XML. If you guys remember, images are inside your drawable folder and those titles and descriptions are inside this file which is strings.xml so i need to put them in right and so i'm going to bring them here first i need access to the resources object so that i can call get string array now to call the resources object itself i need to actually have a context object so here inside my constructor i'm going to see context c so now what i can do is i can say c dot get resources and this actually returns a object of type resources that i can say resources res and now using this res, I can find these titles, descriptions and images from XML. So I can say res.get, you guys see that, get string array. And then I'm going to say r.array.titles. This is going to return me a string array. I'm going to store that temporarily inside something. I'll call that string titles. The same way I need to get descriptions again. So let me actually repeat those steps for the description. Now for the image array, if you guys remember, the images are inside the drawable folder. I don't need to use the res object for this. I can directly initialize those images here by saying int images. I'm going to make a simple array of images 
by referring them directly by saying r dot drawable maybe one now this works because each of these values r dot drawable dot something is actually an integer so i'm going to put semicolon comma and i'm going to fill the remaining values so at this point i have the titles inside this titles array the descriptions inside my descriptions string and then all the images inside this images so what i need to do is group one particular title for example say title of zero description of zero and image of zero create a single row object out of that and then put that single row object inside my array list and that's exactly what we do now so here since we have 10 objects if you guys remember i'm going to use a for loop by saying for i less than 10 i plus plus now i need to create a single row object that will contain titles of i descriptions of i and images of i so you get the bigger picture right you're going to make a single row object that contains these three now let me actually make a constructor that can directly use these three values to initialize a single row object very fast right so here i'm going to go at the top inside our single row class i'm going to make a new constructor by saying single row so at this point i have my parameterized constructor inside my single row class that takes three parameters the title the description and the image and initializes them the traditional way you do in java programs by saying this dot this equals to blah right so at this point i can simply create a new object here by saying new single row semicolon now i could say single row s equals to something like this but the idea is we are not interested in the single row object at all all we are interested is to put these values inside our array list which is list right so i'm not going to have any references here instead I'm going to directly say list dot add and then simply take this entire thing put it inside my array list by saying list dot add so you got get the bigger picture now the titles of zero descriptions of zero images of zero will be added in a new single row object which will be inside our list and the same will follow for all single row objects and they will be completely stored inside our list right now so at this point all the data is initialized over here now only we need to do a few more things for example here inside our get count method we need to return the number of elements inside our array which is list over here so for that i can simply say list dot size this returns the number of elements then there's the other method which is public object get item now what is expected here is that someone gives you a position say zero you're expected to return the object at that position and that is exactly the behavior that you need to overwrite here so for that we can again instead of returning null over here we can return something we can say list dot get this also returns the single row object at the given position i right the third comes into the picture when we are using databases to populate data but since here we are not using any databases the identifier for our object is nothing but the array index and that means in a database scenario when you give int i say zero you will probably expect some value like this which is nothing but the identifier through which you can identify this object but since we don't use any databases this index for example zero itself is the item id and that means we return i over here so in this video i've shown you guys exactly how to override i mean how to populate the data inside our array list in the next video I'm going to show you the most ultimate thing which is our get view method inside which we are going to take data from this list put it inside this structure which is called single row dot xml and finish our list view so if you guys like what you saw please subscribe to my channel comment let me know your thoughts i would love to hear from you guys thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next bit have a nice day